you might think that this is my um, uh, my illusion. Maybe I um, I'm dreaming of uh, uh, finding a, a hoard of ancient coins um, uh, because nobody knows if there was a, a coin hoard um, and nobody speaks about it. Nobody acknowledges that there was a, a hoard found um, by the end of 2017 or early 2018. But um, I'm interested in certain um, city um, coins and I start to see um, um, some rare coins um, to appear one after another, one after another, uh, when um, uh, for so many years, there were only a couple of them were known. And um, seeing them uh, coming um, in, in a certain influx um, immediately grabbed my attention. And then um, from one city, I started to see um, other cities. So uh, one city to another and to another and to another and to another, I was um, po positively convinced that um, they were dispersing a horde. So um, at the beginning, I thought maybe it's a small horde of um, uh, maybe, you know, What's happened to the city? 60 coins recorded a certain city that I am interested in. And then I noticed that it is not, um, you know, a, a small horde. It's a larger horde, of course, um, until I counted them all before this presentation, I didn't know exactly how many um, coins were involved in this uh, hoard, but I knew it was a big hoard uh, when I did uh, my presentation um, uh, for the first time. So um, uh, three years passed in the meantime, and, and, and I recorded um, as many coins as I could see and I'm going to share my findings with you. And um, I will um, be uh, um, happy to hear what you uh, think about this, uh, that uh, there is a hoard. It is just my findings. So these are the cities um, or mints that are represented in this hoard. So uh, at least um, uh, seven, uh, eight, uh, mints, and then there are some uh, unknown um, um, issues. Um, we don't know, you know, which city minted them. Uh, we have theories, we have um, ideas, opinions, but we still uh, don't know exactly where those coins were minted. Um, and um, there are um, a significant number of coins, either previously unknown or thought to be extremely rare in this hoard. And there are some brutal um, test cuts um, from each mint. So somebody tested these coins um, as he or she accumulated them. And some of them um, were not very convincing, most likely, and they wanted to test and um, they, um, they used a chisel to um, uh, test cut. And then you have banker's marks on certain issues. Uh, and then you have some chemical cleaning um, signs on certain coins. Um, and then some um, coins are extremely worn uh, or uh, one, um, one side is worn, the other sign is not so much worn or both sides are worn. So they, they, they tell us a lot about uh, the um, a minting technology and uh, minting techniques and shortcomings uh, of certain mints. So let's go over these coins. Um, I, I said that I was interested in a certain uh, city. This is Malos. These coins were extremely rare. Uh, only a handful of them were known um, and they were in certain um, catalogs. But you wouldn't um, you wouldn't see many of them. Maybe you know uh, one or two um, each year, and certain years you wouldn't come across any of them. And all of a sudden, you have all these coins 
uh, flooding the, the market. And they were all being sold one after another, two after another. Uh, so they, they started to show up. So this is uh, from Malos. Uh, you have a bearded and winged male deity um, in a kneeling running stance uh, to right, sometimes to left, holding um, a solar disk with both hands um, uh, uh, on his navel. Um, you know, we, we, we studied these coins and we don't know uh, if it is a solar disk or if it is a lunar disk, if it is a, a, a different disk, we don't know. And, and nobody knows who that deity um, uh, is uh, either. So on the reverse, we have uh, Eswen. Um, this, this is a city by uh, the Mediterranean in, uh, the, um, in East um, Cilicia. And um, Swen is a symbol of Aphrodite, and Aphrodite um, emerged from the um, foamy uh, waters of the Eastern Mediterranean by um, Cyprus uh, Island. So it is consistent with the mythology and everything. And, and they're beautiful coins, especially the rendition of the uh, Swen is um, extraordinary. Wouldn't you like this one? And then the obverse is being so enigmatic uh, it immediately attracts the attention of people who um, know about this mint. And then you have uh, the same obverse and then uh, standing um, swan. And then you have walking swan. These were extremely rare. And then you have a swan with um, an eagle perching on it and maybe you know, doing something to uh, the swan. Uh, and then you have different... Um, uh, rendition of the uh, eagle and also the um, uh, the legend here the city's um, ethnicon is Marlo and here is just Mar in the abbreviation. Uh, then in the horde we um, came across uh, these um, different types. Um, again uh, you have a two-winged uh, deity it looks like a female deity in this case uh, with um, a ponytail here uh, and holding again um, a solar disk or um, a lunar disk, whatever disk it is. And on the uh, reverse, we have uh, the swan uh, flapping the, uh, um, the wings and here um, a, a docile, nice um, swan um, um, standing, not walking. And uh, and then uh, we have uh, the earlier types uh, that appear. You know, I, I, I started to put them in, um, in order of appearance in uh, the um, auctions. Uh, I, you know, I should have started with these because these are the earliest um, issues from uh, the city of Malus. And on the um, overs is um, a, a deity with two heads, Janiform heads, four, uh, um, curly wings, and um, it's the, uh, the upper um, part of the body. And then underneath you have um, the river god, uh, Piramos, uh, that runs through the city, um, man-headed bull. Uh, and on the reverse, uh, the uh, swan flapping uh, its wings again. Uh, and, but the, uh, the shield uh, type of thing here uh, this is the first time we have such a good example that shows the head of a bull or a Bukranian maybe. Uh, there's, you know, there's no way we can certainly say what it is, but this is one of the nicest examples that appeared in this uh, horde uh, so that we can uh, have, um, uh, we can theorize what the disc, um, this disc uh, might uh, represent. And then you have this one, um, the disc is completely flat. I don't know if it was designed this way or it um, wore out and, and it became uh, flat like this. But as you see, the swan is now uh, facing uh, to the right. So this was um, from a, a 19, uh, 2016 appearance. So these are extremely rare uh, coins. Uh, and all of a sudden, we see multiple of them up here. Here is another one. On this one, it looks like the rays of the sun 
um, chiseled um, into the uh, the die. So uh, it's it's so enigmatic. And then here you have the uh, swan uh, in the the marshy um, delta of the river, um, and and some floral types in front of it, maybe eating um, uh, some uh, um, uh, some grass uh, or floral um, uh, growings in that area. Uh, and then, of course, the, the Ankh uh, symbol, uh, the key symbol, um, which represents life in, uh, uh, in Egyptian um, civilization. Uh, it's it's really interesting that we see these, and then also what we see here is the uh, the Jennifer wing um, god or deity uh, has two wings, not double wings as we see on the other example, and the uh, the uh, the feet uh, are winged as well. So we are completely at a loss here. So many variants and so many um, differences on each variant, and it just um, drives me um, insane um, to uh, you know research and uh, find out and uh, document the history of this city. So these are the earlier appearances of these coins. Very um, poor um, examples, not so nice examples. Good ones were purchased by certain um, uh, previous collectors or museums. But what you would see in the market were these, not those uh, very nice coins. And then I noticed Tarsus um, uh, issues, so many of them. Um, I, I stopped examining them and I started to record them. Of course, uh, as you know, um, when they appear, you have to save them and then you have to um, save the information about them and then record the um, um, the date and the auction and the lot number and everything. So it's it's a lot of work. It's quite um, time consuming. And when they uh, flood uh, or rain uh, <laughs> like this, it becomes uh, quite overwhelming. But and then at the same time, it becomes an obsession. You don't want to miss any. You started to record them and you want to record more and more and more. You don't want to miss. And you check this uh, auction, that auction. So this is how I have been um, working in the last three years on this, um, uh, on this uh, hoard. So what we have here is um, um, a, a horse uh, rider. Uh, again, we don't know who this person is. Um, there is a tiara. Um, he's wearing a tiara. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting headdress for Persian um, nobilities. Um, was it um, the uh, great king? Uh, we don't know. Um, they want to suggest that it is Cianesis, um, uh, the uh, head of the dynasty um, in Cilicia at that time, and um, very uh, well depicted, uh, wearing a certain um, kind of um, knitted or um, uh, cross-stitched um, uh, trousers, and uh, holding some kind of a flower. Um, they suggest that it might be the lotus flower and a beautifully harnessed uh, horse with ornamentation on the head and uh, with a quiver and you, and you have a key symbol, an ant symbol, and on the reverse you have the kneeling and um, shooting an arrow with bow, um, great king that we are used to seeing on um, uh, Persian coins. Um, and then you have um, variations with the tars uh, and eagle behind. Maybe on the previous one you have an eagle here too. We don't see it very well, but uh, on this one you see the eagle very well. Uh, but the uh, reverse has um, a legend. And then you have um, a different one. You have winged solar disk of the uh, Persian um, uh, deity. Um, Ahura Mazda, and uh, you have a rather different um, uh, reverse. And then you have uh, a reverse with uh, the great king um, uh, with a quiver with floral ornament. 
And you have the horseman with or without a clock. Uh, here, uh, the horseman with a clock, and here, the horseman um, doesn't wear a clock. It's, it's incredible. And then uh, came up this one with a tree, um, the tree of life, um, some of the numismatists uh, wanted to suggest. The variations are incredible. And then you have the uh, smooth um, uh, background uh, and then chiseled uh, background. Whatever happened, they wanted to do all these changes. Uh, and all of a sudden, we started to see uh, extremely rare or some um, unknown uh, types from the city with the same uh, or similar uh, obverse, but on the reverse, you have two soldiers. Um, and then um, these are with spears and, and there is one soldier with a ball and a spear and some um, lettering in Aramaic. And then you have this one. Um, this was um, not known previously or uh, another variation uh, was known. Uh, and then you have um, Nergal of Tarsus, they would like to um, suggest. Uh, on the reverse with the tree of life and the um, lettering um, in Aramaic such says it's um, Nergal. And then we, we saw these. Uh, these were um, not known before or um, they were published in, um, in some very old um, catalogs uh, with unknown, uh, as unknown types. Uh, on the reverse, we have the same uh, rider, and on the reverse, we have uh, two barriers. One is about to die, the other one is uh, using uh, his dagger or sword um, to kill, holding the head of the, uh, the warrior. Uh, the headdress of the warrior um, resembles uh, the Corinthian um, uh, helmet, the other one is not wearing that kind of helmet. Uh, very, very uh, enigmatic uh, types. And then you have this one, similar uh, to um, the, the reverse of the previous coin, but on the reverse of this one, you have a bull. So uh, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, the, uh, the number of coins and the variations that we haven't seen before uh, start to pop up one by one. And then of course, this one, um, this is the previously known type, but uh, there were only one or two uh, known, and then we, we have two more um, uh, coming uh, or being offered at the same time in this horde. Then we have these. Um, do you want to um, uh, attribute them to Tarsus? Yes, you would like to do that because you already saw the bull um, represented on, uh, on uh, the coin of Tarsus, on the coins of Tarsus. And then um, you have the Ankh, uh, the key symbol um, on uh, Tarsus coins. You see Ankh symbol um, on uh, Cyprus coins as well, but um, these don't seem to have similar fabric to uh, the, the Cyprus ones. So, uh, again, we are uh, at a loss uh, completely. We don't know uh, where these coins were uh, minted, but we want to suggest that they come from Tarsus. Um, and uh, why do we say that? We have the, um, the, the wall um, uh, with turrets, uh, here the wall with three turrets, and then you have uh, these Tarsus coins, very similar rendition of um, city walls. Um, and then this one uh, uh, with a, a, an Ankh symbol, and then you have one without an Ankh symbol. And um, finally, um, going through some um, ancient catalogs, or old catalogs, I should say, uh, I found this one from 1898, a um, uh, collection of Weddington by uh, Babylon, um, about 120 years ago. Uh, they um, had an example. Uh, just like this one without the, uh, the Ankh symbol, uh, but obviously from the same mint. Um, and they um, noted it as um, an unknown Cilician uh, mint. 
After um, Tarsus, you have Soloi. Uh, these are very well known types. However, um, uh, the type uh, with a laurel uh, branch on the side was very rare. And, 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 and this guy, this merchant or the owner of this hoard, um, whatever he sold, uh, he uh, received a, a big chunk of uh, this type. So many of them uh, are uh, in this hoard. Uh, and, and the rendition of the um, Amazon on the obverse uh, tells us that uh, it is either um, uh, end of the archaic period uh, and beginning of the classical uh, period, or there is some kind of an archaizing uh, effort um, to it. Uh, but then you have other examples that will tell you that they are um, uh, obviously classical. So you can see easily the archaic um, art rendition here. And here, if, if you look at the face, you can see the classical rendition. And I just have the slide so that you can appreciate the, uh, the difference between the two. And then you have, of course, uh, with the city ethnicon and uh, the laurel branch uh, to one side and to the other side. Some uh, people would like to identify this as um, an ivy leaf, uh, which might be true, uh, but I would like to think that it is, um, uh, it is um, laurel branch. And then you have um, different uh, rendition uh, of the uh, lettering and the legend all came at the same time in the same horde. You have ivies uh, on the obverse, as you see, and then you have classical and archaic uh, heads of the Amazon, uh, as uh, you see on these two um, coins. And then we have this um, incredible uh, type. Uh, again, this was, um, Maybe no, I didn't know this one existed, but uh, when I went through um, old catalogs, I found them, they were noted uh, many, many years ago and everybody forgot about them. And when uh, the um, auction houses uh, listed them, they listed them as unpublished. And um, so this is a good example for you um, to uh, pay attention uh, when auction houses say unwanted, uh, only one known or uh, extremely rare, uh, don't take uh, their word um, at uh, face value and, and do your research. Uh, anyways, here uh, we have this type. Uh, obviously, uh, obverse and reverse uh, from Soloi, uh, but the legend uh, is uh, Lycium, uh, Lycium. Uh, and apparently it means uh, eagle or eagle, uh, and, and people's uh, have haven't uh, deciphered what it means at the moment, but it is um, certain that it's a um, uh, Lycian uh, legend. And you see so many of them. All of a sudden, um, you see uh, quite many of them. And, and, and to me, uh, this is uh, a hoard. And I would like to interpret it as um, similar export from Solo to uh, Lycia at that time. Uh, I have uh, these two uh, examples with different legends um, using the um, uh, similar uh, overs and uh, reverse uh, types. Uh, this one, again, with um, a certain um, uh, Aramaic legend, uh, GBH, uh, as they um, deciphered it. And this one uh, indicates a different city, um, Anchiali, uh, near Soloi. And uh, so many uh, ideas, um, uh, uh, theories around these variations. Then the next city uh, is Holmi. Um, these were also very uh, rare and, and um, the obvious is um, a horse rider about to jump off the horse. And then on the reverse is the um, um, stern of um, a galley uh, to left with the city ethnic on, on, on top of it. And, and all of a sudden you have uh, these. And as you see, this is an epigraphic. There is no legend on this one. And this one, um, you see the full legend. 
And right next to Holmi is calendars, of course. We, um, we know that calendars um, produce um, at least two or three other big hordes uh, dispersed during 1980s and 1990s. So uh, like um, uh, Athenian um, uh, turtle drums, uh, these calendars um, coins are very uh, well known among uh, the collectors, museums, um, and, and uh, coin enthusiasts, uh, and they always sell very well. Um, and, and, but this time you have the Iwi uh, types. So this person, the owner of this uh, hoard, uh, again, whatever he or she sold to the people of Calendars, he uh, received a big chunk of the um, Iwi ornamented reverse calendars um, staters, uh, so many of them. And um, look at the variations uh, with, the, uh, with almost uh, five letters of the Ethnicon uh, and the, uh, um, the A series, maybe uh, the mint mark, and then P uh, series uh, mint mark and uh, no mark. And then, um, um, more abbreviation in uh, in the um, legend uh, Kel only uh, and I believe and uh, there is um, a, an error engraver's error most likely uh, it was uh, somehow um, chiseled off or um, scraped off but you have so many examples uh, coming from this die it's it's incredible. Uh, and again, um, better examples with different uh, types. Ura, um, uh, oh, this is, uh, I have a typo here. It's going to be calendar, it's only. Ura is the earlier um, city or very, um, a city close by. Maybe um, calendars move uh, from Ura to uh, the location of calendars. But you have um, uh, city walls represented here. These were also very, very um, rare and not many of them were known. And we start to have them. And, and different types uh, appeared for the first time, uh, unpublished types uh, appeared for the first time from this. Uh, uh, next, we have um, the city of Side in Pamphylia. Um, these are very well known types. Uh, many of them were known. They were not um, they were not very scarce, but they were not abundantly available. But now they are abundantly available. There are many, many, many of them. And um, and of course, uh, like in other um, mints, we have uh, variations. We have here um, a dotted and um, Lush uh, border uh, around the um, uh, around the uh, pomegranate, um, a symbol of Aphrodite again, uh, representing productivity. Uh, uh, and on the um, uh, reverse is um, Athena, head of helmeted Athena, uh, with an incus um, square, and you have dotted um, circle around the. Um, uh, pomegranate, you might suggest that the, the dotted one is earlier, you know, type uh, looks primitive, but um, it can be just the opposite. Uh, and they might have started uh, with uh, a better rendition uh, on the overs, and then uh, when they needed to strike more, they took it easy and just put the dots. And the main reason why uh, we theorize, the main reason why they have these circles around the uh, obverse on, or, or reverse um, uh, type is to keep the, uh, the metal, um, the blank uh, between the uh, dots because during the striking, um, during striking these uh, coins or blanks uh, have a tendency to uh, run uh, from between the dots. So they had to uh, develop some technique and, uh, and they improved in time these, uh, this technique and um, used ornamentations rather than just um, circles or dots um, 
and maybe um, instead of um, solid line, uh, the dots um, um, work better. And that's why they uh, chose to um, use dots or uh, ornamentations like uh, the, the dotted um, loge here. Uh, so many, many theories to, um, to discuss. Uh, and, and right next to um, CIDE, you have the city of Aspendos. Again, these were uh, well-known types, uh, but um, they were not so abundantly available. Now I can say that they are abundantly available. And, and the best preserved types um, among the uh, coins in this hoard uh, come from Aspendos, especially this type. This type, um, uh, better um, types were known, better preserved uh, examples were known, but uh, for the first time, we have so many of them, very well preserved. And, um, and, and the variations are uh, very uh, interesting, or struck ones uh, are very interesting. Here you have the warrior uh, with um, a long spear, and on the reverse, you have the lion uh, with Triskeles and the full legend uh, on the um, reverse. And then uh, P and Fa uh, beneath the, uh, um, the lion. And here you have the uh, warrior with uh, a turtle between the uh, legs. Uh, here you have the Triskeles lion uh, with uh, a turtle uh, on the rivers, uh, and and just the uh, the legend um, shortened uh, abbreviated legend. And now, uh, at the cost of overwhelming you, I want you to uh, look at this one. I just wanted to show you the uh, a, a short, a, a summarized uh, variation um, uh, of the coins. So going back, it is, it is, I know it's overwhelming, but um, uh, we have one of the earliest examples of this um, mint. Uh, the warrior, uh, we don't know if what, what the warrior is holding in his hand, uh, but it is quite uh, possible that it's a sword, it's not a uh, spear. And on the reverse, uh, you have Triskeles uh, within a two um, square uh, frames and, and then uh, the the, uh, the legend it's only e here uh, epsilon, and then you have iv with e, and then you have iv iv between the um, legs and uh, around the legs of the warrior, and then this this one you can see the iv leaves better, and then you have another floral type here, uh, and this one uh, floral type here and astragalus here and without any IVs. And it's obvious that the warrior is holding um, um, a sword. And here the legend is ES. Uh, again, the warrior is holding um, a sword most likely. We don't see it's um, or struck most likely. And then there is an IV here. Uh, this one certainly holds a spear, not a very long spear, but um, a moderate size of um, spear and uh, ES on the reverse. This one, the uh, warrior is advancing in an attacking uh, stance. Uh, and on the reverse, you only have ES. Uh, this one, um, the warrior is just walking uh, with a sword. And uh, on the reverse, you have um, a, a spike in the, or, um, um, yeah, a spike in the middle of the, um, uh, the Triskeles AS and the head of uh, an eagle and the wings. I will leave and the Triskeles between the, uh, the legs of the warrior. And now the legend um, uh, E S E somewhere here, S T uh, spread around the uh, Triskeles. And uh, you have I V is here. 
and you have only EST here, and then EST with a laurel branch and holding a sword, and there is a cock uh, in front of the um, uh, triskeles and the ivy, um, uh, ivy here, and then you have ES together and TF around it with a spear obverse, just E, just S, and then ES uh, line triskeles type, EST line triskeles type, EST no turtle this time. Uh, previously we had turtle somehow here and here. So um, on this one we have no turtle uh, on either side. And EST, and there is a certain box here. Uh, they must have made a mistake while carving it and then they didn't want to give it up and um, they just um, carved a kind of box uh, or square uh, of here. And there are quite many of these available. And then um, EST and F and D, actually, I forgot to add that. And then lion to right. Uh, all of these uh, line types line to uh, left, and this one is line to right. So, and then you have these types, uh, an epigraphic, uh, no legend, no nothing, but um, very, the rendition of the warrior is extraordinary. Uh, even the ornamentation within the shield um, is very well rendered and the, the naked body uh, with the follows and everything, everything is in, in uh, perfectly uh, depicted on the coin. The attention to detail is staggering, it is, mind below. And these are all, uh, you know, 20 millimeter coins. These are very, very small coins. Um, and and um, here are the uh, more variations for you to appreciate. And then you have these new styles. Uh, the, uh, the movement um, changes, the rendition of the warrior changes, and the, the way the um, uh, Triskeles uh, rendered uh, is also quite different. And the last city um, uh, at Western Anatolia is Phaselis. Um, these were also uh, well-known coins, but um, nobody had seen them, um, you know, offered so abundantly. All of a sudden, um, we have a, a good um, array of the earliest uh, types to the classical period uh, examples. Um, uh, some of them are uh, no uh, an epigraphic, no legend. Some of them have um, abbreviation uh, of the. Um, uh, and the legend and some of them have, uh, you know, with more letters uh, of abbreviations. Uh, and here um, you have the uh, pro of galley uh, in the form of um, a four part of a boar uh, here. And on the um, reverse is the stern of um, galley. And now with fas um, legend, uh, earlier types uh, with um, uh, just punch, uh, ornamented punch uh, reverse. Then comes, of course, um, the cypress mints. Uh, this is, um, uh, this is uh, an area that I don't know much and I will not speculate um, anything, but I'm just going to show you the examples that I detected and, and um, uh, since I don't know much about the Cypress mints, I approached um, a colleague who is an expert um, uh, on the Cypress uh, coins, and she kindly agreed to work with me. So I delivered the, um, the coins, um, the, uh, the database that I um, formed to her, and I'm uh, hoping that um, she will be able to um, shed um, uh, better light on uh, the, uh, the material from, from Cyprus. So when we publish the whole um, uh, hoard, um, the Cyprus 
uh, information will come from that colleague. But again, many, many uh, new types, many, many unknown types, or many, many um, extremely rare types. They flooded the market. Um, these types were very well known. Um, and I suspect that uh, there was another uh, horde um, before 2017 um, of um, this type. Uh, but then together with uh, the, um, uh, the other uh, coins from uh, the other uh, Eastern Mediterranean uh, mints, they flooded the market. Um, this was a very well-known uh, type. Uh, there are now um, hundreds of them. Uh, then uh, we have these enigmatic types. Uh, this is the second enigmatic type um, that we cannot really pinpoint the, uh, the mint. Um, the rendition and the, uh, the obverse uh, type um, suggest that it is um, it is from a mint uh, in Cyprus, but uh, my colleague in Cyprus doesn't want to believe that it is from Cyprus. If it is not from Cyprus, where it is from, we don't know. On the reverse, um, most numismatists agree uh, that um, uh, an olive tree, um, which I um, uh, accept with certain um, reservation, um, this is from, from the Mediterranean, and um, this is the time when um, the uh, Kyranian uh, silphium was very well known. So another city is advertising um, a certain plant um, with maybe medical um, uh, substance and, and advertising uh, its export most likely. Uh, but whatever it is, we don't know, but I'm sure uh, my colleague uh, who just joined us uh, will be able to um, shed um, better light on these types um, when she, um, uh, when she uh, completes her studies on these enigmatic types. So this is the one that I'm talking about. Um, uh, the obverses, um, almost all of them were uh, struck from very worn dots. Uh, so it's, it's obvious that this mint, and like many other uh, mints um, in Cyprus, uh, didn't have um, a coin die engraver. Most likely coin dies were um, ordered from um, a mint a workshop, um, in, in, in other parts of the Mediterranean. And uh, once they uh, receive the um, uh, coin dies, they use them until they were unusable. That means until they uh, break apart. Uh, as you see, these are extremely worn dies. And if you go back to uh, this um, slide, you will see um, that most of the uh, dies are extremely worn. And of course, they were all, um, um, some of them, not all, but some of them are, uh, quite many of them, I should say, are overstruck. And you can here see uh, the rendition of the, uh, the uh, Aspendus uh, warrior. And um, so they use the, the silver uh, as they received from um, Aspendus and they struck their own type on, on it. And here, some more material from uh, Cyprus. Again, these were um, well-known types, but um, only a handful of them were um, known. Now we have many, many of them. And these are very um, well-preserved types, um, probably uh, uh, earliest uh, strikes of the dice and some extremely rare types more types more types from cyprus again you see uh, worn uh, overs and or reverse dies um, used uh, until they um, were um, unusable almost 
and uh, see how they continued using the same dyes no matter what. And then um, you see brutal test cuts. And these test cuts uh, are seen uh, on uh, coins from uh, almost every mint. So uh, when this person uh, received these coins um, in exchange, um, he wanted to test them. Uh, or before he um, buried them, he wanted to test them. He, no matter what, the testing was um, predominant. And I would like to believe that they were done during the time that this person received these coins. So many different mints, so many brutal um, test cuts. Now, this tells us something. Um, the intrinsic value of the silver had the purchasing power, not uh, what is represented on uh, the obverse uh, or reverse. As you see, no mint had the privilege to, uh, uh, to uh, go through without testing. And um, no mint authority uh, was reputable enough to believe that his uh, coins were um, worth not to test. So all mints, um, everybody knew that uh, forgery was, um, uh, was extensively uh, practiced uh, on, the, on the coins of uh, each mint, so they wanted to test them all. And this continues um, with the other mints. Uh, sometimes you have more than uh, one test cuts, three test cuts. Maybe in certain uh, mints, um, they already uh, applied the um, test cuts and then they uh, use them in, in, in trade. And then you have these bankers marks and test cuts at the same time. So at some point, uh, certain bankers put their marks and that was not enough. And uh, people um, used um, chisels to uh, test and see what's inside and more uh, bankers marks. So this person purchased um, or received these coins uh, from a certain area uh, where people uh, use test cards. Uh, or structs, uh, you have uh, a, a great um, number of examples to study um, over structs and how coins crisscross the Mediterranean uh, between Cyprus and uh, uh, eastern part of um, Cilicia, all the way to Faselis and um, again uh, uh, in, in um, um, in western part of the Aegean Sea near Athens. Uh, you have so many of these coins uh, overstruck. Um, Tarsus warrior uh, over Aspendos. Um, uh, again, uh, warrior Tiriskeles uh, Aspendos here. And then you have here uh, Lycia um, uh, Faselis uh, stater over Aspendos. And Aspendos over um, Cilicia Tarsus maybe. Uh, or this, um, this type uh, with the city wall. And here, um, a spendus or a calendarous uh, type. So many of them. This is, uh, I, I found an, uh, an excellent presentation on uh, overstrikes on Pamphylian and Silesian civil staters by Francois de Clatay. Um, I, I found it online. He did an extraordinary job to um, study these um, overstrikes. And, and as you can see in this uh, map, uh, you have so many coins crisscross the Mediterranean uh, in trade, uh, I believe. And um, more examples here. More examples of the Cyprus types. I see... Um, uh, signs of chemical cleaning on uh, some of the coins. So um, I believe um, most of them were cleaned, um, if not all. Um, 
and and you see the uh, the coloring of chemical cleaning on certain coins, and they, that tells me that um, they come from the same uh, hoard. Uh, as you see, uh, many different uh, mints are represented here, uh, and I found. Uh, I recorded, I should say, quite a few unclean types. Um, were the coins all found in uh, this state of um, color? I cannot tell, unless um, someday somebody uh, comes out and tells us um, about this hoard. Um, I'm hoping um, after a while, um, we will get more information or people will provide more information about these coins, now that they're all sold uh, and, and, and the, the hoard is dispersed. Um, I don't know if we can get more information about the uh, people involved. Um, then you see uh, some uh, bronze residue uh, on some of the coins. Uh, even though they were clean, you can see um, bronze residue on, on some of them. And then of course, um, um, the lots, uh, lot offerings uh, that convinced me uh, that, you know, uh, this is a hoard, but not just this small um, a batch of uh, coins from these mints. Um, you have um, Tarsus, Soloi, Aspendos uh, offered at the same time, Side, and the calendars and all the others, uh, as you see. More of those. These are all separate uh, offerings. At the cost of overwhelming you, I am showing you these um, lots. And of course, um, Aspendos warrior Triskelis types um, were offered uh, in most um, lots, so many of them. And then they mixed them with some other types. Um, I guess they wanted to, I don't know why they did that, but um, they mixed them with some other types. So uh, now the numbers. Um, how many coins um, do we have here? So uh, 182 pieces that I recorded from Malos. Now, when I give you these numbers, you have to um, uh, understand that um, I might have missed uh, some or many, or I might have recorded some that were, that were not from the horde. But these were all... Um, coins offered from early 2018 until um, recently. Uh, so I have 182 pieces uh, from Malos, 203 pieces uh, from Tarsus, uh, the well-known uh, types that can be attributed to Tarsus, um, that is, uh, 125 coins from Soloi, seven coins from Holmi, 262 coins from Calendres, 16 coins from Ura, uh, 239 coins from Sida, and 548 coins from Aspendos, the largest group, and uh, 88 coins from Faseles. Finally, around 500 coins from various mints in um, Cyprus, uh, 400, um, 80 or something like that, I believe, uh, I recorded. And again, um, I might have missed and, um, and or I might have uh, included um, some coins uh, that were not in the uh, hoard. Um, but uh, in, in good faith, I believe many of these coins come from the, uh, from the hoard. Now, how many in uh, total? Oh, uncertain wall bull types, uh, 44 pieces. So um, these brutal test cuts, uh, bankers marks, um, same chemical cleaning residue, um, many coins uh, struck from worn overs or reverse dyes, lot offerings, they all tell me that um, these, uh, the coins uh, are, um, um, 
the um, possession of a seafaring merchant. Uh, and it was buried around 400 BC, no later than uh, 400 BC in my um, humble uh, belief. So in total, we have 2,224 pieces. And um, if we uh, take average 10.5 grams of uh, each coin, um, you uh, come up with uh, this uh, figure, 23 uh, kilos or something like that. So it's one talent, uh, near uh, one talent, if it were 25, 26, 27, depending on um, uh, you know, which area you're talking of and the talent, um, it, is, uh, it is consistent with uh, a certain weight standard. Um, so um, it would be fair to say that um, the uh, owner of this hoard accumulated and completed one talent of silver uh, and, and put them together and buried them somewhere and was never able to go uh, back and recover it. Um, I have uh, two more uh, slides to um, share with you. Um, some very interesting types, uh, a brokage and uh, overstruck coin from this uh, enigmatic uh, mint. Uh, uh, whether it is Tarsus or another mint, we don't know, but uh, a brokage um, tells us something. It is, um, um, it, it, it is a, a mint error, um, a coin um, uh, sticks to uh, the reverse uh, die and then struck again, uh, having the, uh, um, uh, the positive and negative of the same type on each side. Uh, so this is an ore struck coin. We see um, the, uh, the previous uh, type uh, underneath the, uh, the ball. And on the um, uh, other side, we have the uh, negative of the uh, obverse uh, type. So uh, the, the mint was working very hard and, and they were working quickly and they didn't pay attention to uh, this uh, mint error or they simply thought it's good silver, it's coming from our mint, uh, quality control was not really so strict and um, they let it go. Uh, but that tells us something that the mint was working, um, not maybe around the clock, but they were working hard and they didn't care either the, uh, the quality control or um, uh, they didn't pay attention to it. And the last um, item that I would like to share with you is um, a very, very interesting, at least to me, uh, for people who are interested in um, Cilician mints. Uh, on the uh, obverse is the, uh, the type that we see um, in models, uh, the uh, deity with four um, uh, Kirby wings holding um, a, a disc and running to the left. And on the reverse is um, a Soloi, a um, um, bunch of grapes from Soloi. Um, was it an intentional uh, mistake? Was it, well, this is certainly a quality control uh, problem. Uh, you wouldn't use uh, this obverse for this reverse. Uh, yet we don't know why they did this and why they let it go. Uh, and they, um, they just let it go. Uh, either they didn't notice it or they just wanted to play a trick uh, on people um, 2,500 years um, later to uh, try to solve the mystery. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll be um, happy to answer them. You're welcome. What impact did this have on the price of these coins? Oh, well, when, when they uh, were, uh, to tell you the truth, I didn't pay too much attention to um, uh, the prices, uh, but uh, I, um, I was interested in um, some of the coins that I, I uh, acquired. Um, they became uh, more affordable uh, from the point of um, view of a, a poor collector like myself. 
And uh, so um, right now I can see that the prices uh, uh, are impossible for a person like myself to think of uh, purchasing uh, uh, these coins. Uh, Aspendos types uh, are still rather not so um, expensive uh, because they're still um, abundantly available. But you know, consider um, Athenian uh, tetradrums. Uh, if they're in good condition, there is always um, uh, an appeal uh, for them. So uh, many of these coins, uh, especially Malos and Tarsus types, um, uh, um, are very, very strong. Uh, Calendarous types are very strong. Um, those mints uh, with fewer coins, um, represented with fewer coins, um, are very, very strong. Uh, what that hoard did um, to the market is um, they, they open up the eyes of people uh, and they, you know, people start to see these coins. When you see uh, one or two uh, each year, you might not notice because um, you have now um, at least uh, one, 50 to 100 uh, auction houses um, conducting uh, auctions uh, every year. Uh, at the moment, uh, bidder.ce, um, .ce, I guess, um, they have at least 20 auctions um, being offered um, uh, every week. Uh, and, and you don't really notice so many of them when you have so many um, uh, auctions. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in a certain area and then you notice those coins, and if you are um, uh, uh, crazy like me to um, spend your, your time uh, and energy to um, record them, uh, you, you see them. And, um, but it has been a, a, a very, very um, a pleasurable uh, journey for me to um, uh, chase uh, this horde. Uh, and uh, once we publish it, I think um, it will contribute to um, our understanding of the economy of um, those times. Uh, one thing that I would like to add here is that um, in the past, uh, not seeing so many coins, many um, scholars uh, wanted to associate coin minting or hoards to uh, military campaigns. Why would people have so many coins? People didn't use coins. Barter was the main um, means of uh, exchange in the past, uh, which I always uh, approach with a certain um, reservation. Um, I always believe that um, uh, trade was the main um, uh, reason why we have um, so many variants in, uh, in, in mints. And, and this um, hoard um, uh, convinced me uh, uh, almost 90% uh, that these, are, these hordes have nothing to do um, with military campaigns, uh, but they were all merchant um, um, accumulations. Uh, and, and there's so much we can learn from uh, these coins. Any so questions? Any questions? questions? Yeah. Yeah, Vicky, I, I have a coin from a suspended uh, uh, of wrestlers. Oh yes, yeah, uh, they are later types. Um, uh, these were all uh, from uh, 480 uh, all the way to 400 maybe. Uh, and also studying these uh, coins, uh, we will be able to um, uh, redate uh, some of the issues from uh, these uh, mints. Uh, so the, the study of uh, these uh, coins will um, teach us a lot uh, about um, dating, um, artistic style, 
um, mint activities and uh, relations um, uh, from um, uh, from east to the west of the uh, eastern Mediterranean. Uh, there is so much to learn from this hoard. You know, I decided to call it um, hoard of the century, uh, not for um, not to attract attention, but it is. Um, something that I wholeheartedly believe um, because uh, previously um, many uh, of you might know uh, the Elmale Hort um, found in uh, uh, near Antalya in southwestern Turkey um, was called uh, Hort of the Century. Um, that was found in um, 1982, I believe, or 84. And um, what happened was that Hort um, was sold to a certain people in the U.S. And, um, and they started to boast about their purchase and they gave out the number of um, uh, coins that per they purchased. So the Turkish government uh, immediately um, took action um, through a journalist and um, they uh, uh, recovered, uh, I think, 1,700 or 1,800 of them. And um, uh, what made uh, that horde uh, so famous uh, was um, the decadrums uh, and, and or octadrums um, they, uh, that that horde um, included. Um, but of course, the most important part uh, is never uh, mentioned that the variety of coins coming from different mints from the western part of the Aegean uh, mints and the eastern part of the Aegean. So, uh, and, and they immediately associated it to um, um, some military campaigns. Uh, but slowly I read um, uh, people writing about the horde and slowly people uh, um, uh, talk about um, merchant trade activities um, uh, between the um, uh, Asian cities, uh, among the Asian cities, and, and, and that, you know, it could be um, um, a seafaring traders uh, horde as well, because the, the variation uh, of um, mints represented in the horde doesn't suggest that it is a military campaign um, type of um, accumulation. Hi there, it's uh, Roger speaking. I'm, I'm sorry my video is not working so you can't actually see me. Um, I just uh, want to thank you so much for doing all the research. I was so impressed by the detail of the warrior's calf on so many of the coins. I had never seen that kind of detail where you've got the bulging of the muscles that's so apparent. Um, but it seems like a common common thread uh, throughout that horde with that definition of the leg, as opposed to the other, other body parts that don't seem to be as well defined. So I, I found that intriguing. Well, yeah, uh, in the newer type, you see the, uh, the, um, the chest muscles and abdominal uh, muscles as well. Um, I'll just go back to the presentation and uh, share that with you. It's it's unbelievable how much um, attention was given to um, to detail. Uh, and well, you know, look at any of them. Uh, any of these or have uh, ha has so much detail. Look at the uh, the head of the uh, the ram here uh, on the on the um, reverse. It's like a, a photography piece. Uh, and, and the way the ram sits here, uh, look at the rendition of the uh, uh, forelegs and the um, the, uh, the um, rear legs. Look at look at how you know this person uh, observed the uh, this animal so well, uh, and and I'm sure they created some kind of a model for themselves before they start carving these um, coin dies. Uh, most likely, they um, sculpted uh, their um, uh, models uh, with clay. And I would say that they even 
um, sculpted a, a, a female uh, version because as you know, when you uh, start carving, you start from, uh, from the right side of the uh, die to uh, get an impression that looks to the left, right? So, uh, and you're working on a very small uh, flan. It's 22 millimeters. This coin is only the size of a quarter. Um, um, uh, so uh, you have to have a, a good model to look at uh, to um, do such a great job. Um, and if we go back to, uh, uh, just a moment, I'll go back to, uh, this one, for instance, look at the abdominal um, mm -hmm. um, uh, muscles. Uh, and if we go back, um, you know, many of these were, uh, um, when they were in good shape, look at this one. Uh, not, not only the, uh, the calf, uh, uh, the legs, uh, and also the, the rendition of the uh, Triskelis, you see the same detail. And, 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 and this one, obviously he's charging. He's ready to um, start running. Whereas this one is walking. And here again, you have a walking um, warrior uh, holding um, a sword and um, the uh, coin die engraver didn't know how to figure uh, to put the, uh, the sword here. And as you see, it is somewhat lost behind. It's like holding the sword uh, behind his body. Uh, whereas um, on this one, um, it's going over the body, uh, even though here, I think uh, when you, um, yeah, it's a better die here. Uh, it's like the, um, the spear is going behind the legs, but uh, it wouldn't be practical, of course, to carry the uh, spear, that way, spear that way. So you see a lot of detail. Yeah, here you see the, uh, the tip of the sword much better. Yeah, here also the spear is very well. Well, they are the same die. Uh, dies actually. The detail, look at this one. I mean, um, the rendition of the, um, the, the, the line, look at the, the detail here. It's unbelievable. Yeah, here's this one. And, and if you go to earlier um, types, even though as simple as uh, a pomegranate here, and, and sometimes simple types are more difficult to render. Uh, look at the shape of the, uh, uh, the fruit. Uh, it's not so easy as it looks to create um, a, a perfect shape like this. And, and you're carving um, a hard metal um, to get this shape. And one chisel mistake and you're in trouble uh, as it happened um, on these calendarous types. Uh, so you're, you're doing the, uh, the legend and here the legend somehow you made a mistake, uh, he was, he was I think he wanted to put an E and instead he put an N and then it didn't work, of course. And uh, he just uh, scraped it, uh, scraped the die. Of course, as you scrape, you create um, a bump and um, it's, it's obvious um, when you uh, uh, strike coins. But the detail, uh, look at the, uh, uh, the rear legs of the goat. Uh, unbelievable detail. Can you uh, tr trace um, my um, metal content uh, from one mint to another? Like, 
uh, could you, if you didn't, if they were not marked, could you do a, a chemical assay test and know it came from a particular mint because of the trace metals? Um, you know, they did um, those tests and I never uh, believed in um, uh, the um, consistency of the information that they would gain from those uh, tests. And um, they wanted to um, um, connect um, uh, the information that they received from those uh, coins to certain mine areas. Um, and, and to a certain degree uh, on um, Athenian tetradrums, they were successful. Uh, they were able to um, connect to uh, the Lorian uh, mines, uh, many of the um, coins from, um, uh, from Athens. However, um, these coins, uh, as you see, there are many overstrikes. Um, so they crisscrossed the, uh, the uh, cities and um, people received them uh, somehow, but they didn't um, circulate them as is they restruck their own types. So uh, it's, it's really difficult to um, determine. Some of those old strikes are difficult or impossible to detect. Um, for instance, here, this one, there is a Flynn um, crack here, most likely, uh, but it can be an overstruck coin too. <coughs> not very sure about that and, and to be able to um, determine that you have to have the coin in your hand and examine it flipping um, back and forth and checking the, um, uh, the sites and everything. Uh, so it's really difficult to know um, uh, where exactly the silver came from. Um, they talk about um, silver mines um, on the Taurus mountains in eastern part of Cilicia. Um, so some of these coins and, and also the, uh, this, uh, the soloid types that we saw here um, with uh, some Lycian or Lycian uh, legend, I want to believe um, was put to um, export silver to, uh, to Lycia. Um, so, um, you know, most probably they had a certain mine in Eastern um, Cilicia uh, and they exported some coins from uh, these mines. But in my view, it's not really worth to um, uh, destroy these coins to, um, um, to understand where the silver comes from or where the silver goes. Um, I think that information is obvious. Um, from the uh, hordes and other coins that we have in the end. If you want to um, study further, we should look at the coins instead of destroying them to test them. There are ways of, of analyzing the metallic content without destruction, and that's electron displacement analysis. And I've used that on occasion. Well, I, I think um, I, I heard um, uh, about that, I read a paper, and um, um, I, I'm not in a position to dispute uh, their information. Um, especially, um, they did that on um, a, a unique um, electrum coin uh, from Lydia, and. Um, I, I, as again. Um, I'm not in a position to say anything about it. And, and they, were, they were giving uh, certain figures about uh, the silver content, uh, about the gold content, and uh, the ferrous metal content, and um, copper content. Um, but how they came up with those uh, figures, uh, they don't mention. 